there's a lot of people that think that the Christian life is very complicated. And it's based on not knowing. And the Christian life may be difficult, may be hard, definitely full of sacrifice. But the Christian life is not complicated. It's not about rules and do's and don'ts. It is about our response to God. Jesus was in a pickle a little bit. They, well, the Pharisees thought he was in a pickle. They were trying to trap him and to get him to say something that they could use against him. And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, we have this story. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met to gather together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, Jesus simplifies the Ten Commandments here. He takes the first four commandments that Moses came down the mountain with. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall not make a graven image. We are not to make an idol. And he takes those four things with keep the Sabbath day holy. And he says, you see there, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your command. Now, that's not complicated. That simplifies things. So the Christian life is not about what we do or don't do. It's about loving God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. Those three things, the heart, soul, and mind, overlap. I believe that people call that a Venn diagram when you have those circles. And those circles are almost three of the uh, Olympic circles. And the heart and the soul and the mind, they wrap each other around each other. And so the thing that we need to see here that's really of importance is, is that what God wants from us is that we love God with all of our heart, with everything that we have. And now that's the first and the greatest commandment. A second is equally important. That's important to understand. Sometimes we think that the second part is not as important as the first part, but it's equally important. We love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And the second, equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. So, What is the Christian life? The Christian life is loving God with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and loving our neighbor as ourself. So, we have the vertical. The vertical is our relationship with God, loving him with all of our heart. We have the horizontal. We love our neighbor as ourself. Interesting, isn't it? The vertical and the horizontal make a cross. Isn't that interesting? The vertical and the horizontal make a cross. So we can apply that. We are to be a cross. We are to have a right walk with God, loving Him with all of our heart. We are to have a love relationship with our neighbors. We are to live out the cross We are to represent the cross. We are to be the cross in the world. Jesus said, anyone that wants to follow me, you must deny yourselves, take up the cross, and follow me. What he's saying there is, we are to love God with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love our neighbor as ourself. And then he finishes this in verse 40. Jesus says to us here, the entire law... And all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. 
So, live this out. What are you going to do today? I'm going to love God with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind, and I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. That's what I'm going to do today. Now, along the way, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do my responsibilities. I'm going to, you know, fix the things. I'm going to have the meetings. I'm going to do all the things that we are called on to do every day. We're going to take care of the house. We're going to take care of the kids. We're going to take care of our relationships. We're going to do all those things, but we're going to do all those things with this being the centerpiece. We're going to be the cross, vertical and horizontal. We're going to love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And the Scripture says... All the commands, all the laws of the prophets and what we have in the word are fulfilled if we are cross-like every single day. So, it's not complicated. We have today some wonderful testimonies of what it looks like to love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. And to love our neighbor as our self. Katinga kasiza vi wangamba Ndi mwana bogo ya gala Ejo ntira vi ekonde se wakana Revyo yo kero mala no vikola Yesu kakasiza vi wangamba Ndi mwana bogo ya gala Ejo ntira vi ekonde se wakana Revyo yo kero mala no vikola Onja kate mulu atu Onja kate mulu atu Dogo te mu Yesu One thing I know about Syria, her beautiful smile always shows. She's a hard-working person. She's a fun person. And I look forward to hearing what all Jesus does in her life. Amen. Do you believe in Jesus here? Yes. Syria, my... My Next. sister in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Next. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good. All right, very good. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and I think you can get the, the, that idea very well. However, we do have a thousand words. And so, Shannon, we're just going to start with you since you're on the end down here and work your way down. I've just prompted them uh, basically to say whatever the Lord leads you to say uh, in, the, in the framework of how did you see God at work in your own particular life. So, Shannon, if you'll give us a start, please. So he's letting me go first because I'm always nervous. So if I get this done, it'll be easier. <laughs> um, excuse me for reading, but it's just the way I can keep my thoughts together. 
It would be hard to pick one thing, but I did write down a few moments to share with you. Watching Amy and the ladies interact, while I never doubted Amy's heart and commitment to Elizabeth's voice, she truly is right at home there. They are her family and home away from home. Amy and Evelyn are definitely a legit team. They are right where God wants them, and lives are truly being changed. Each day, Amy, Evelyn, along with Faith, Margaret, and Sylvia are pouring into and sharing Christ with each lady there. The joy and gratefulness in each of them is overwhelming to witness. The way the ladies love each other, pray together, their outwardly devotion to Christ, and the constant thankfulness they show is just incredible. The day we went to Margaret's church, there was a lady sitting to my left, and she had a notepad and Bible. And I know she only looked up at the pastor twice, maybe, just for a second. She was writing pages and pages of notes. She could not get enough. The way they crave the Bible is so encouraging and convicting at the same time. Each lady's story was not only powerful, but so heartbreaking. One in particular who shared her story with us was Enidy. Her story, actually, she was abused and then her husband left her, and then she let him come back, and he gave her AIDS, and then he left again. As she shared, I could feel her emotion and her pain, and it broke my heart. It was a reminder of how even in the midst of our pain, Christ gives us joy. Please pray that she feels God's strength and comfort as she heals. There were so many moments that replay daily in my head from our trip. I asked you to continue to pray for this ministry, but also Consider to commit to donate monthly for Elizabeth's voice. Lives are being changed, but to continue saving the precious moms and their kiddos, they need our monthly support. Also, please encourage Amy when you think about her. For eight years, she has kept this going, and it has often been very, very difficult. She lives with them, then comes home, and I cannot imagine the struggle she experiences between these two completely different worlds. Thank you for your prayers and donations given with shoes and purses. I will forever be grateful to have gone to spend this time with them. Yes, I did leave a piece of my heart there with them, and I look forward to going again and hope to take my girls with me next time. Thanks for letting me go. Hello. Um, There is so much. I'm the crier. (laughs) Um, I've been on this journey with Amy from the beginning, and to actually go and meet the women is a whole different ballgame. Their stories are heartbreaking of the things that they have overcome, or like Enity, who's currently overcoming, um, and the way that Evelyn and Amy have partnered with these women to equip them with a dignified job is so powerful. And it's something that we don't think about here. The domestic abuse rate in Uganda or in this part of Uganda is 95%. So most of these women have fled abusive situations and they're just trying to survive with their kids. And thinking about that as a mom is heartbreaking. And that's where, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. This, this is where it's so, it's personal for us, and I get that, that we're, what we're trying to do today is to take each and every one of y'all to Uganda with us, to see what we saw with our eyes, um, and like, like I said, I know it, it's, it's personal for us because we saw it, um, the children, the homes that these people live in, um, I'm, I'm, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, yeah, it's just... It's crazy how in America, we were talking about, like, our problems are complex, I guess. But in Uganda, a lot of their problems can be solved with money, which sounds so trivial to us because, I mean, we have jobs that provide monthly wages for us. And so, like, I've been a supporter forever, but it's not enough. And so that was my big aha is that my monthly donation has to go up because I don't need as much. But what they need is when Timothy, one of the little boys, whenever... Timothy comes to the um, compound with a swollen lymph node. The mama needs to be able to take that baby to the doctor, and they don't have that opportunity 
if it's not for us providing that for them. And thankfully, we were there, and we were able to help him get the treatment he needed, which I think cost, what, 20 American dollars? And one of the reasons is because Amy has been sick. I think a lot of us know that Amy has been sick. Um, she fell and hit her head about a year and a half ago, and she also had malaria. She's been struggling. And so um, the bank account most of the time is at zero. As much as, you know, some of us are giving, there's a lot of times when that bank account is at zero. And they have orphans coming up, or they have, like you're saying with Timothy, coming to the door and needing $15 to just go to the doctor. And I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was bad, but I mean, she, she, had, she has to be able to say yes. And that's what we're here to, to literally beg you guys to start giving to them monthly. One thing, I'm just going to jump ahead, guys, but one thing that we realized whenever we were there, the final night there... I, I, don't, I, I don't even know. Raise your hands if you think that we give as a church monthly to Elizabeth's Voice, like we do the other organizations um, uh, that, we support, yeah. that we support as a church. I mean, how many of y'all think that we give every month to Elizabeth's Voice out of our church budget? Out of our church budget? Every, no, so y'all, y'all all were thinking that we were giving or not giving? Giving, we're not. We're not. I mean, like, if you give as a family and you send it in and you say, you know, to donate this to Elizabeth's Voice, yes, they get that. But as a church, we are not, we are not allocating a certain amount of money every month for Elizabeth's Voice, like we do to Cambodia and Peru and things like that. And I'm not taking away from any other organizations. They all need us. But Elizabeth's voice needs us too. And for eight years, Amy has been doing it with the support of a few families. The sales of baskets and, and, and aprons and things. But there's only, there's, there's, I don't even know the percentage. I, but the fact is that she needs our help. And we all, as a church, need to start giving to this. $25 a month. I mean, if there's some of us that can give more, some of us may not be able to, but I'm telling you, if I could take you there and let you guys see what we saw, $14 a month pays their rent. Give that every month if you can. I mean, that's 50 cents a day. Anyway, I'm that's where I'm so passionate about this, though, because I know a couple years ago we, we were talking about going, and at that particular time, the Lord was laying on my heart, no, just the, the amount of money. And I don't know, maybe it was selfish because I didn't want to go. It's a hard trip. I mean, we went on one plane six hours, on one plane 15 hours, and it is tough. I mean, it, it, Cambodia is tough. They're all tough. Mission, the mission field is tough. It's not, I mean, compared to what we have and what we, you know, are, anyway. But a few years ago, we decided to just give. Whatever it was going to cost us to go, we just gave. Well, this, this year, for whatever reason, God was like, no, y'all, are, y'all need to go. Y'all need to go. And boy, did he put roadblocks in our way. So many roadblocks. I mean, I won't even get into that. But for whatever reason, Satan or whoever it was was trying to keep us from going. But we were meant to go. And I do believe the the main reason why we were meant to go is to fight for Elizabeth's voice, to fight for Amy. And not only Amy, it's like Lee being the pastor of our church, this is his daughter. And I mean, watching him, he, he, he's never obviously asked all of us to, to give to them or whatever. And it's like, he needs, he needs to know that we're supporting Amy and and the cause that she's done for eight years on her own now. I mean, the brewers need our support. Elizabeth's voice needs our support. I'm going to talk a little bit about the baptisms. You saw a picture where we baptized, uh, I think, a dozen women and then five men. And those men are the security guards that are... um, employed by Elizabeth's Voice, and the driver that Amy uses when she's in Uganda. Um, If you were baptized at this church, you got a certificate like this. So Lee had the idea, oh, and you you might 
have this hung up somewhere in a frame. It may be in a drawer somewhere. You might not even know where it is. But Lee had the idea that we would take blank ones with us because we knew that there were some ladies who wanted to be baptized. So we did, and the baptisms were just wonderful, just so joyous, right? And they each got one of these filled out with their name and the date and the place, and they were just thrilled with them. Well, after the baptism, Evelyn told me, I said, they were happy with these, right? And Evelyn told me, these are important. She said, in Uganda, if you are preaching, someone can challenge you, right? But if you have this that says you are a baptized Christian, you have a right to preach. And y'all, these ladies preach. Every Saturday morning, outside of the gates, they gather and they sing uh, praise songs and they preach. And it makes an impact in that community. I got to know a lady named Fatima uh, pretty well. And Fatima speaks English, so it was a little easy to speak to her. Um, And she was one of the ones baptized. And she said that when she was in her home, right behind where Evelyn lives, she would hear them laughing and talking during the week. And then she would hear them on Saturday morning singing praise songs and preachers preaching and she wanted to know what that was about she was muslim and so she went over there and they welcomed her in they eventually gave her a job and when she was baptized she chose to cast off her muslim name fatima and she chose the name frida because she no longer wanted to be muslim she wanted to be christian so their impact is making a big difference a big difference And what, every morning before they even, because, you know, the women come in at, like, I want to say 7 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the morning, and they start praise and worship, Mm -hmm. and what, for like an hour, Mm -hmm. and then they go to work. And, I mean, they stay, and they are making these baskets. We're not just handing them money. I mean, they're, they're, they're working for it. It's, like you said, dignified jobs. And, um, I mean, this is six days a week with their children, um, yeah. Um. One of the reasons that they are, uh, they are um, available to preach, they are there on Saturday mornings, is that they're not out begging for school fees for their children. They're not out prostituting to get money to feed their families. They have a dignified job, and they are giving back to their communities. And I think that's one of the powerful things about donating, being an educator, you just see all of these kids, and they're just running the streets. Like, it's during the day. It's school time, and that was heartbreaking to me because in America, every child has the right to a free education. Because there is no public education in Uganda. Yeah, and that's one of the ways that they keep them oppressed. And so by us standing with these mamas and saying, I see you, I see the value in your child being educated. We're able to send these babies or help send these babies to school so that they can hopefully break the cycle of poverty that their family has been in for generations and generations. And so that was super powerful to me because I've stood with the mama Martha for years and I finally got to meet her and see her face and y'all the gratitude of these women for stuff that we like take advantage of. Like I'm an educator, like I, I get it, but like just her gratefulness for me helping her send her babies to school was so powerful. Um, And so I think that's another super tangible way for us to give. I've seen lots of like clear the lists and all the things, which is super important. I am not negating that at all because teachers do hard work in America, but we also have a job to help these babies. And one of the ways we can help them is by ensuring that the school fees are paid every year so that these babies can break the cycle of poverty for their family and get that education that they need. So, And the, the education is not cheap. Um, Tammy mentioned that they pay $14 a month or so for rent. But in Uganda, it costs almost $2,000 a year to send a child to school. Now, how is the average family? How are they going to do that? Right. right. And, what, and also what this does, so what I didn't realize is these ladies come to work every day. They're also being fed. They feed them breakfast, so they they feed them spiritually, and then they feed them breakfast, and then they feed them lunch, and so that's the meals that they have. So, I mean, the money that, you know, some of us are giving is, that's what it's going towards. And then I think we also have to raise school fees each year, is that right? So, 
three times a year. So if we could all start giving, whether it be, I mean, whatever you can afford, hopefully at least every family in this church can start giving at least $25. That's what I'm challenging the church to do. I mean, and if you feel like you can give 100, I would hope that maybe the, the few of us can do that. But, um, but go online and buy baskets for sure. And pray for Amy, because mm-hmm. Amy shared her heart with us, and, and, and she's overwhelmed, to say the least. She needs your prayer. She needs to keep this going. She has a lot of people depending on her. And I think it's been about five times this year that she has thought about stepping down. She doesn't want to, but whether it be her health or there's no support behind her, but if she shuts these doors... All of these women and children are back on the street, back to where they were, and we're, we're not letting that happen. Please understand we've fallen in love with these ladies and their children. We have. So. Yeah, I'll give you my journey to it. I, uh, I've been traveling a lot this year, and Tammy came home a couple months ago and said, hey, what do you, what do you think about going to Uganda? I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't have time. I'm too busy. And, and I said, well, you know what? I said, let me, let me pray about it. And so she called me that morning and that evening. God had put it on my heart. He was like, oh, no, you're going. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, Lord, please, because I was going on an international trip four days, or getting back four days before this trip. And I was like, I'm going to be tired. I had all these excuses. And, you know, of course, we all have excuses. And I've always said, you know, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plan. And uh, <clears throat> he laughed and said, no, no, you're going. So I get home that night, I told Tammy, and I was like, well, I guess, I guess the Lord wants me to go. And we have been donating to this ministry, I think, since inception, mm-hmm. probably eight years ago. And I've wanted to meet these ladies. And I, I don't know if everybody knows about what is going on over there, but it, it was a vision that Amy had and Evelyn had. And, and, and this is a God sequence because they meet in a hotel and Amy had prayed about meeting somebody. Evelyn had prayed about meeting somebody. They meet in a hotel in Uganda. Evelyn's selling baskets and bracelets and next thing you know, inject God. And now we are supporting 50 men and women and 117 students. So... It's just, that's a, when you inject God, that's, you know, that's what happens. And uh, anyway, you know, fast forward, uh, Tammy and I grew up poor. And an American standard poor, then we get over there and we see Ugandan poor. And it's not, it's not a matter of, you know, if in America you want to worry about, you know, what kind of house you live in, what kind of car you drive, your 401k. Over there, it's survival mode. This money is going to, to feed these families that, that can't feed themselves. Uh, like Lindsay said, I mean, 95%, you know, domestic abuse. And it's, you know, it's these women that they can't take care of themselves. They're living on the streets. Uh, the kids, you know, they don't have any clothes. They don't have nowhere to live. And Evelyn has literally taken every one of these women in and clothed them and fed them and um, you know always you know my dad would always say he's like son we're rich which I'm like man we live in a 20 by 10 trailer house we're not rich and he said no we're rich in love and this is what these women are oh, absolutely. and it'll it'll blow your mind to see the smile on her face just you know the the love that they give to each other but to us not even knowing us um, it was just a big deal, and I'm glad that I'm glad that God put me on the journey to to be with these women and be part of this team to help support Amy. Well, Brother Lee said, "Take as much time as we feel like we need to." So I'm not going to rush this, uh, but any last? Well, I shouldn't say last. It sounds like I'm rushing it. Any other thoughts you would like to share at this point? 
I think on the screen you can kind of see like the monthly breakdown of all of the things and this was one of the things that we were not aware of that Amy kind of enlightened us to. You'll notice on there Evelyn has a salary. She never takes her salary. She always gives it back to the women. So when the mamas come and their babies are sick, that's the money she uses to make sure the babies go to the doctor or the women go to the doctor or if uh, someone comes to her gate, she's able to help them. And then um, Amy's salary, Amy said she's only had a salary three times this last year just because the need is so great and she would rather give to the women and make sure that the women have their needs met. Um, and so, like, these women are doing the work and they are being the hands and feet of Jesus. And I feel like the least we can do is provide them with what God has given us, which is money, which sounds simple. And it's, I mean, we hate to be the people who are like, give, give money, give money, give money. But honestly, money and prayers is what they need to sustain this ministry. <clears throat> um, and Amy was very honest with us and very candid and said that if the finances continue the way they're continuing, Elizabeth's voice will be no more. And that, I think, broke all of our yeah. hearts. And right now what comes in um, is, I believe, right around $5,500 a month with, you know, the church members that are giving and the school fees. I think some people, um, you, like, like you have a child that you adopt and send to school or whatever. So there's like $5,500 that are coming in right now. And as you can see, she needs at the minimum $1,100 a month. I mean, $11,000 a month, sorry. Um, so we're basically, we're at half. I mean, we have, we have a lot to do. Yeah, not part of this budget, but I don't know if Andy Bob's got a picture of, uh, you know, the warehouse that we're building and living quarters. So uh, some, of you, some of you have given money already, and, uh, you know, it's about 60% done. But what, what this is going to do, it's going to allow... Uh, seven other women to live in this house and then they have a workshop on the third floor to be able to build you know baskets and and jewelry and everything and to keep them covered because right now they're work they're working on a dirt floor they put a tarp down and then you know they weave these baskets and braids on a dirt floor and you know if we can complete this project that's another step forward in God's kingdom and whenever it rains, they were all piled in that little room, which they call a kitchen. I don't even know how it's called a kitchen because, you know. <laughs> it has a stove in it, so it's a kitchen, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we could go on, and uh, with respect to our time, obviously, I think it's quite obvious uh, that the, one of the greatest impacts of taking trips like this, whether it be Peru, excuse me, Chuck, Peru, Cambodia, or Uganda, or wherever else, is the impact on meeting people and seeing their lives and seeing God working in their lives, which in turn bounces back to God working in our lives. And so you're getting it secondhand. You haven't been there. Some of you have actually in the church, but um, my prayer for you would be to prayerfully ask God, where would you like for me to go, whether it be right now, Cambodia, Peru, or Uganda. There may be others on the horizon for our church. Uh, and it just starts with praying, Lord, here I am, send me. I realize that there are people in this congregation of which I'm getting there quickly. Uh, age is a factor where you can't travel places like this. But we've got some awfully healthy young people here, uh, as you've seen Jesse being a great example of it, who can still be the hands and feet. And so it, that's really where I think all this is coming from, is praying, praising God for how this trip went, but also praying for the needs, uh, praying for those ladies. There are many more stories, and I would invite you to seek out each of these to say, tell me another story. Tell me about another one of these ladies. And uh, I'm going to tell you my one story, then we'll pray and let Brother Lee come up to wrap this up. Um, it, like they've been saying, um, the, a, lot, so a lot of the funds that are going into Elizabeth's Voice is to help with the school fees for these these young children. Now, there was one young boy, y'all help me with him, uh, Peter Phillip, the little guy that was first in his class, all that. Uh, Hassan, yeah. Hassan. Hassan. No, 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 the little kid. Okay, I didn't do my homework. Peter, Peter. 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 okay. Anyway, Peter came, and uh, he's uh, probably 10, 11, something like that, and he shared his thanks for um, the finances that we had given to help him uh, get through his schooling. 
Um, in the system that they're under, it's a British-based system. There are certain age out levels at elementary school and then probably early high school and then terminal high school that you can age out and don't have to go any further. Well, he had aged out at that first level and he was number one in his class, absolutely number one. Now that sounds like a thing to, uh, to, to praise for, but two years before, he and his brother were selling drugs on the street. That, folks, is an investment in eternity for uh, young people like that to get them out of that kind of a, of a life. Uh, and that same story could be repeated often. So let me say a prayer of thanks for as y'all go back to your seats, and then I'll have Brother Lee come up and wrap this thing up. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to share of one week of our life with these wonderful ladies and children and men that are part of Elizabeth's voice. Um, thank you for allowing us to laugh with them, uh, to cry with them, to pray with them, and to pray for them. And so as we continue on with our lives, Father, let this be a holy burden that does not leave us quickly, but that uh, continues to move us to be a part of this ministry. Um, thank you for the church and, and the way that people have given in the past, and we just simply say, uh, may your will be done in the future for us to continue to support through prayer and through finances this wonderful ministry. And we thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. We want to thank you guys. Hi, Chasha the Crossing. We greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you guys so much for all that good support you've been giving us for eight years. God richly bless you. I remember last year when Amy was sick, things weren't good, but you still stood with us. Please continue standing with us that we may serve God together and change the lives of many women. For example, these ladies who are here, you see most of them are happy, doing well. Imagine if they had not been in this project. Some would be picking garbage, some would be on the street, some prostitutes. Many bad things they would be doing. But for now, because you guys have been with us, supporting us, standing with us, serving God with us together, our lives are changing every day. Thank you so, so much for being there for God's work and continue doing it. The reward is in heaven. God bless you guys so much. We love you. Greetings from Uganda. Bye for now. Thank you. One of the things that are uh, difficult to understand is between our country and there, they're undeveloped, of course. And uh, I, I, I laugh all the time when I hear people in our country say, it's the breakdown of the family. That's why we're having all these problems. Because uh, when I think about the breakdown of the family, I have that measuring stick now. And we have so many families that are trying to do the right thing. And it is in their culture that the men do not take care of what they're called to take care of. We have been working with the men they're trying to. It's been very, very difficult. But we've got about four or five men that are doing the right thing. Uh, one uh, is a security guard now. And uh, his little wife, they live right across the street. And after they get all their kiddos to bed, uh, she comes out when he's on the night duty and sits with him. And uh, when I heard that this time, uh, I was just... It was the parting of the Red Sea. It was the walking on the water of Jesus. Miracle of all miracles. Knowing the guy five years ago to what's going on now. She, every night, after the kids are going to bed, she walks out, sits in a chair next to him. They can still hear their kids in the little place down the road there. And holds his hand. And I went, that's the work of God. That's a miracle of all miracles. 
they're going to make it. Right? But that's not the way it is with all the things. That's why there's so many problems. Evelyn was sold to a man when she was 17 years old. And uh, he beat her. He, gave, he, he made two children with her. He starved her. He locked her up in rooms. And she finally got enough courage because of you know, that Stockholm thing. And she was able to get enough money to, to run away. And he was able, he was a kind of a powerful man in the village. And he was able to get the military to look for her. He was able to get the police to look for her. And uh, she went in a crazy way to get to Kampala so she could hide from him. And she literally went into a situation, never went into prostitution, which many of them do. And there's two ladies that were baptized that were involved in prostitution before Elizabeth's voice came in their life. Um, that uh, she's made it. And the Lord's done that. And, and so uh, she's a very, very special lady. And she is definitely not selfish. She is definitely not greedy. She is definitely not working us to improve her life at the expense of others because it, there's no evidence of that whatsoever in how she lives. And so uh, it's a real cool thing that the Lord is doing. We got a group in Peru right now, and they are going to return with joy. Now, the group from Uganda, they returned with joy. I, I, uh, I laughed when I saw it, and I realized once again, I've been reminded that I am absolutely addicted to returning from mission trips with joy. An amazing thing. I love it. I, I don't know another way to get it other than a mission trip. I think it's because as Jesus sent them two by two out, the 70, two by two, and they return with joy, it says in Luke 10, 17, uh, it's a fascinating thing that happens when people return from under, not being distracted, just the Lord, no other reason for being, for 10 days, for 15 days, however long it is, and just focus on doing what Jesus wants. It's an amazing thing that happens in people that I have found no other way to duplicate that. Jesus says they return with joy. And, and so every time we send people out, they return with joy. Now, we all can't go, as Steve said, but we're all part. And it's not about the place. It's not about international. It's about being on mission with Jesus. It's about where you live. That can happen where you live. If, if you have 15 days, 10 days of just unhindered and undistracted uh, servant of our king and and there's a joy that comes that is quite special and quite remarkable i'd love for you to have it i'd love for you to experience it you don't have to go to africa you just got to go next door i see it in the workers adventure week i see it when the kids come back from camp I see it in the workers that went to camp with the kids. I see it when people go off to youth camp, which is really a miracle that you return from youth camp with joy. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. I hope the Lord is stirring your heart and you can get some of that somehow or another. We've been trying to get Evelyn to come. She can't come. You know why? Our country won't give her a visa. Yeah, I, I, I think that's illegal and we're against that. <laughs> but yeah, I thought about it. We could probably get a plane to Mexico City and go down there and pick her up and drive up to Acuna, maybe, or Presidio and say, don't ask no questions. Get up, just get out of the car now and walk a mile that way. We'll pick you back up. <laughs> Unbelievable but we can't get a visa for her, or, or she would be here. We tried that five years ago. We tried it three years ago. We have not been able to get a visa. If you know somebody somewhere, then get that woman a visa. We would be very, very, very appreciative.
May the Lord speak to you today. May what they shared with you be in your heart. But our church not supporting Elizabeth's voice, it's difficult when a young lady comes to you and says, Dad, uh, I feel called to start this ministry in Uganda. It would have been easier if it had been your daughter. If it had been your daughter, we'd be supporting it. That's the way it is. But because she's my daughter, any hint of impropriety, we avoid at all costs. And it's been hard at times. She lives with us. She don't have any money. You know, she's had, she's had this uh, brain injury and all that and expenses and uh, you know, we just do what we can do, and we are very much in support of it, but I just want to clear, uh, help you understand, she's my daughter. If it had been your daughter, you won't believe me by saying this, if she had come to me and said, I want to start this ministry, I'd have been all in. I'd have done all I can to fund, to promote, but when it's your daughter, it's just different. So I hope you understand that. That's why this situation is like it is. No hint of impropriety from Lee Brewer. That's my that's my condition. That's my principle about the money at the church. You might have noticed that as the years go by. So what is the Lord leading you to do today? May this will be done.